One of the fastest ways that you can ruin your Google Ads performance in 2025 is to add in a smart bidding strategy too early. While on the other hand, one of the fastest ways that you can limit the performance of your Google Ads campaigns in 2025 is to not use smart bidding strategies. When it comes to using smart bidding strategies, so maximize conversion value or maximize conversions or your target ROAS or your target CPA settings in Google Ads, this is one of the hardest areas to get right inside of a Google Ads campaign. And the importance of it can't be underestimated because as I said right at the start of this video, you get these settings right and it can really scale and be a catalyst for you really opening up new sales and new conversions. Whereas if you get it wrong, it can really kill all that momentum that you've been working really, really hard for inside of your Google Ads campaign. And the reason for that is because with your smart bidding strategies is that one of the byproducts of a smart bidding strategy is that you do see an increase in your CPC because what you're telling Google is you're really get telling Google to prioritize traffic which will convert for your business. And because of competitors, if it's more likely to convert for your business, it's also more likely to convert for your competitor's business, which makes it more competitive, which drives up those CPC costs. And what you could also do too, if you get your target setting wrong, is that you can actually limit the total impressions and clicks in your account, which can eventually dry up all of the traffic you're getting inside of your Google Ads campaign. So what I wanted to do in this video is I'm gonna quickly take you through the golden rules that you need to follow when it comes to setting your bidding strategies, but then we're gonna jump into an extended screen share because I wanna show you some real, real life accounts of some different examples and different data points I was looking at and really sort of explain why we made these changes. And in some cases we added in a maximized conversion value strategy, other cases we adjusted the target CPA. But I really wanted you to start seeing the data trends that I'm looking for and the process that we go through in order to get these settings right. Getting your bidding settings right inside of your Google Ads campaign is one of those core optimization tasks that you need to be setting, but you need to make sure that you're not over-optimizing your account. And this is one of those areas where I see people making too many changes too quickly to their Google Ads account when it comes to smart bidding. So if you wanna make sure that you're getting your the cadence or the speed of reviewing and optimizing your bidding strategies at the right pace, along with all of the other optimization actions that you need to be completing for all of your different Google Ads campaigns, I want you to follow the link in the description below so you can get access to my Google Ads optimization checklist. All right, so now that I've helped you with that optimization checklist so that you always know what you need to be optimizing inside of your Google Ads campaigns, and that's really the framework which I use for to optimize my Google Ads campaigns. Before we get into those screen shares, I wanna take you through my five golden rules when it comes to adjusting or setting smart bidding strategies inside of a Google Ads campaign. And rule number one is that if you're unsure, I want you to wait. And this is especially true when you're going from maximize clicks to maximize conversions or maximize conversion value or adding in a target ROAS or a target CPA. If you're unsure, there is nothing wrong with just waiting for an extra week or two to see more data before you make that decision. And the reason for that is because this is a significant change. In many cases, it will throw your campaign into a new learning phase, which goes for one or two weeks. And then also on top of that, once you actually make this change, sometimes it does take some time for the results to get better. So it's not something that you can change every week. So if you're unsure, just wait and see some extra data. Rule number two, is that you need to make decisions over longer periods of data. So when it comes to me looking to adjust or add in a smart bidding strategy, I'm look, wanting to see at least six weeks of data. Generally, I'm wanting to see 12 weeks of data. So I'm not just looking at the, what's been happening over the last 48 hours or the, even the last week. What I'm really looking at is I'm looking at longer trends and seeing what's been happening on a weekly basis over the last four to six, sometimes in, even up to 12 weeks. Number three is an important one, and that is that you need to set realistic targets. And this is especially true if you're already running maximized conversions or maximized conversion value, and then you want to add in a target CPA or a target ROAS. What you need to make sure is that you're setting that target based off your current results, not what you want to see. Let me give you a perfect example. If you want to achieve a ROAS of 400%, but currently your account is only giving you a ROAS of 200%. You can't just set a target ROAS of 400% and expect Google to you know, get those results. Now, your campaign may perform at a ROAS of 400%, but the problem is, is that you might see such a high reduction in your clicks and impressions that your total conversions go down and can actually turn your account to be unprofitable. You need to think about it like a ladder. So if you're currently at 200 ROAS and you wanna get up to 400, what you're looking at doing is slowly stepping up that ladder. So you know, over a period of a couple of months, you might take that ROAS from 200, 
up to 220, then up to 240, then up to 260, and, and slowly go up that ladder. For target CPA, you know, you go in the opposite. You might be starting at a target CPA of 50, and then you're slowly lowering it down as those optimizations and results improve in your account. Now it comes to number four, and this is an important one that you don't wanna combine your budget increases with bidding changes. And what I mean by that is that you don't wanna be rapidly increasing your budgets while you're also trying to increase the profitability of your account. That is something that is really, really hard to do. What I generally like to do is I do it in cycles. So we go through, say for example, a three or four month period, where we're really focusing on increasing that spend. We wanna maintain profitability, but we're more focused on increasing the volume. Then we might go into another three or four month period where we're keeping that ad spend pretty much the same, but we're really looking at increasing the profitability of that account. Two main forces in place. And as I said, it's really, really hard to do at the same time. So that's why I recommend that you cycle through those different periods of increasing the budget and also increasing profitability. Number five, the important one, patience, give it time. When you make a change to your smart bidding strategy, especially when you're going from maximize clicks to maximize conversions or maximize conversion value, quite often in the first one or two weeks, you can see a uh, dropping in results. And the reason for that is because the way that Google uses its budgets, yes, it is a daily budget, but it's really running its budgets over a monthly cycle. So Google's learning may be holding off spend in certain parts of the week. It may be focusing different audiences. And this is another reason why sometimes you'll see what we call chunks of conversions, where you might get a whole bunch of conversions on a Tuesday afternoon, and then another whole bunch of conversions on a Friday morning, because that's where Google has really seen where it can get the most conversions for your business. So give it time. Generally, I'm not making any call for at least a month, because as I said, sometimes that first two weeks, results will go down and then they can skyrocket rocket in those weeks three and four. All right, that's a lot of information there. So those five core rules for getting your bidding strategy set right. Now what I wanna do is let's jump into some screen shares so I can really walk you through this process with some practical examples. So it helps you in really understanding these core foundations of getting your bidding strategies right in Google Ads. All right, what I first wanna take you through is we're just gonna do some examples in a presentation that I've got for you and then we're gonna move over into some real Google Ads accounts. But I've got some screenshots here and really what I want you to give you is some simple examples of when to move to an automated bidding strategy. Remember what I'm saying with the automated bidding strategy, this is going from maximized clicks or max CPC to a maximized conversions or a maximized conversion value. So let me give you a perfect example. Now for this one, we would say that this account is not ready and it's not ready for two core reasons. And the first one is that there's only been four conversions. Now you can see that these conversions are getting better, but there's still only been four conversions. And this is also only a new campaign with only six weeks of data. And what we really say with this one is that there's just not enough data in here in order to start going with maximized conversions. So in this case, case, what you're doing is you just continue through that optimization process, you know, optimizing your search terms, adding in negative keywords, you know, you could do some bid adjustments in and around your audiences, looking at your demographics data, making those manual optimizations, really building up that base of conversions. But this one is not ready just purely because there's just not enough data in the account. Second one, this one is ready. The reason why I'd say that this one is ready is that we've got three months of data with really regular conversions. You can see the red line of conversions in here. This is looking at a weekly basis. So there there hasn't been any, any weeks where we've gone down to absolutely zero conversions. This one is slightly under a lot of people, myself included. So you should be looking at getting 30 conversions on average per month. But because we're only one under, and this one's also in an account that has other campaigns which are running on conversion-based bidding, we know that this was a campaign that would work really well with it. Now what I wanna show you one more screen before we get into real Google Ads accounts. These are obviously real Google Ads accounts, but you know what I really mean we're gonna do a screen share inside some live accounts, is that I want you to show you what happened happens when you make the move of moving across to uh, maximize conversions or maximize conversion bidding strategy. So you can see with this one, this is looking at 30 days before and 30 days after. So it's a 30 day comparison. You can actually see that their CPC went up. It went up quite significantly from the high $2 up to $4.50. They actually got less clicks, but what I really, really want you to see in through here is that the cost per conversion went down from, it was ranging at $140 or $138, went down to 98 and they nearly doubled the amount of conversions they got. So that's what a maximized conversion bidding strategy can do for your account when it's set right. But what you really, really wanna be making sure is that you've got the right type of account and you've got enough data in your account so that you're not ruining the performance of your campaign. All right, now what I'm gonna show you is, I'm gonna show you the real effect of what happens inside of some campaigns. And in these cases, we're gonna be adjusting different target ROASs and target CPAs. I'm gonna first start with a e-commerce brand example, and then we'll go over to a lead gen or service-based business 
campaign. Now with this one, what I want to show you in here is that we made some difference in and around their target ROAS. First, it went from a manual CPC across to a target ROAS. Then we've gone through and increased that target ROAS. And you can see that we made these changes in through here, November 25th. So this is where we added in that target ROAS in this section in through here. And what you can also see as well is that we increased the spend. Now I want to show you and give you some context for this account. This is the campaign that I'm going to be taking you through. And this is part of what we call like a full funnel of approach. So we had some other search campaigns running in there. We had a performance max campaign running in there. And what I want to show you in through here is that by switching over, as you can see through here, November the 27th, when we added in, let me have a look here. This is the week of the 25th. So what we did here is that we knew we had a lot of accounts that were spending more and we knew that we had a really low search impression share. So what we're able to do is by switching over to maximize conversions, this campaign wasn't actually really spending its budget. But when we moved it across to maximize conversions, you saw this massive influx of conversions and cost. And I want you to show you in through here, you can see that we really picked up this ROAS. Now this is a brand that they didn't do a heavy discount. They're actually only new to market. So they didn't participate in Black Friday last year. It was really just about, we got enough data in their account and then we switched it over to maximize conversions. So that's like a perfect example of the difference that can happen when you switch over to maximize conversions. The other reason why I showed you this one is because that sometimes shows you the power of what happens when you've got search and performance max running in the same account. Now, you do need to make sure that you're getting this set up in the right way. What I'll do at the end of this video, I'll show you where you can see a video where I share more about this, what I call bottom up funnel strategy approach. Now let's jump into another account. And this one is search based campaigns. For so this one was an American based campaign. We then and broke it out into some different states to really target their spending and their target CPAs around these campaigns. And what I wanna show you first is we're looking at a comparison from April through to May. So it's a four week comparison from there versus what was happening in March and April. When we go into the change history, I wanna show you in through here, we took on this account and what we started to see was that we saw that they'd had originally set their target CPA too early. So it was at $30, so we bumped it up to 35. We then took it from 35 to 40. We then took it from 40 to 45. And we did that throughout April. And what I want you to see through here is that with these changes, at firstly, what happened was that the target CPA was set too high. So it was actually limiting the performance by the time we loosened up that target CPA. Remember at the end of March, it was at 35, which the target CPA, we eventually took it up to 45. And you can see through here what happened. We saw a really good increase in their conversions. And this really came down to the fact that their target CPA, remember how I was saying early in the video, setting it off the real results, not what you want to see happen. That's what had happened in this account. And it was just limiting performance. And when we loosened off that target CPA, what happened was they ended up getting a lot more conversions. And you can actually see through here is that when they had the lower amount of conversions, so this week they had only four conversions at $41. When we hit the $41 again, even though this one was slightly higher, they got eight conversions. This one, they got 14 conversions at $31. So the performance of the account was much, much better. And there's some real life examples of how we adjust and how we optimize around maximize beatings or maximize conversion values and they're getting those target settings right. So thank you for joining me. And remember, if you wanted to get access to my updated optimization checklist, for that link in the description below. And as I said throughout that video, if you want to see more about that bottom up funnel and how we're using the different types of Google Ads campaigns together to really drive more conversions for businesses. And this strategy is the main strategy that is working right now in 2025. I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.